Welcome back to Sasha Day AM. Now, to celebrate 80,000 visitors, dinosaurs around the world at the Ambassador in Dublin has been extended due to roaring demand. And I popped in to learn more about these extraordinary beasts during the week. Have a look. Well, I never thought I'd say this, Sean, but I'm going to have to raise my voice above the roar of the dinosaurs. What a wonderful place we're in today. Absolutely no better place to be. This is just like we've just gone back in time, more than 66 million years to a time when giant dinosaurs still roamed the earth. Well, what is our fixation with dinosaurs? Why do we love them so much? I think every generation had a dinosaur movie. For a lot of people, it's Jurassic Park. The newer generation has Jurassic World. Some of us had the land before time, but the fact is, there's nothing on Earth quite like this today. And I think that's something the world really misses out. And this gives us a chance to experience, for it, experience it for ourselves. Talk to us about what we can see here at the exhibition. Well, aside from, we've uh, just over a dozen of these uh, fantastic animatronic uh, dinosaurs, which they roar, they jump, they, some of them move around. Uh, and as well as that, we have some legitimate dinosaur bones, some that are nearly 70 million years old, uh, the leg bone from a duck-billed dinosaur. Uh, one of the most famous uh, fossils we have a replica of is uh, one of a velociraptor. I'm sure you've heard of them from Jurassic Park films. It was uh, basically locked in mortal combat with another dinosaur, Protoceratops, a relative of this fellow. But what happened was they were both fighting, and the scientists think that a sandstorm took the two of them out at the same time and just entombed them in this wonderful fossil, which is priceless now. That's why we only have a replica. But the fact is, it kind of proved that even though Velociraptor was a bit smaller than how it is in the movies, we know that it wasn't, it was brave. It wasn't afraid to fight bigger dinosaurs than itself. It didn't always work, but it tried. Well, I'm not feeling particularly brave at the moment because these are fierce looking creatures. Let's start with Triceratops. What were their traits? Well, the name Triceratops speaks for itself. It means tree horned face. And despite this fearsome appearance, you know, big horns, a sharp beak, uh, big frills with spikes on it. If you look closely, it has flat teeth. So that is the mouth of a plant eater. So a lot of people think of dinosaurs running around biting each other, but most of them were peaceful plant eaters, being quite happy to be left alone. Of course, the reason for these great defenses is that um, Triceratops had a noisy neighbor, and you probably know what it's called. T-Rex? That's the one. Oh, yeah. we so all love we'll T-Rex. Say hello to this neighbor. So. We call it the tyrant reptile king, because uh, Rex means king, because we thought it was the king of the dinosaurs. Now, oh, oh, oh my. Um, so, it's well, got tiny little uh, arms. Uh, it's tiny little arms, but this was a really uh, clever strategy by T-Rex, because if you took away big arms, which it wasn't really using, it could put more weight to its head to give it that crushing bite, which makes it famous. There were some bigger meat-eating dinosaurs, but we can calculate from the muscle attachments on their jaws that T-Rex is by far the strongest. If it was alive today, it would have no problem munching through metal. So when you see it biting through that car in Jurassic Park, there's no question that it could have done that. Now, Sean, this little fella's pretty special, but why is that? Well, this is a neo-venator. He's a local hero, uh, lived in the UK, so that's about as close as we have at the moment to an Irish dinosaur. Uh, so this one was special. They call it New Hunter, in that it had these strange grooves on its face, which they think gave it an extra sense that we don't have, hence why it probably was a very, very successful hunter. We often hear the term Jurassic period bandied about. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, there were three periods uh, of the reign of the dinosaurs. The Triassic, when the first dinosaurs appeared and started to take over the world gradually. Jurassic was when they uh, had kind of conquered and started growing to enormous size. And the Cretaceous was when they really had taken over and the really famous dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, they ruled the world. Until about 60 odd million years ago, a meteorite brought the reign to a somewhat abrupt end. So is that guy from the last period? Then? Yes, this is a hadrosaur, the most common successful dinosaur. There was more hadrosaurs than any other kind of dinosaur back in the day. It doesn't have big teeth or spikes. It was really, really good at eating. Some of them had up to a thousand teeth, so they could munch through plants and digest them and get the nutrients as fast as possible, grow big real fast. Good at eating. I would have done well back then. So there were three main types of dinosaurs. You have the carnivores who ate meats, the herbivores who ate plants, and the omnivores who ate pretty much whatever they liked. So they're probably the best dinosaurs to be. A lot of people might be surprised, but this is what Velociraptor actually look like. People know from Jurassic Park, it's bigger, scalier, but in real life, it's a lot more like a bird than it would be a lizard. So the Velociraptor essentially is a bouncy blow dry. 
a bouncy blow dry, or a murder bird, as I like to call it. <laughs> uh, Sean, look how maternal this lady dinosaur looks. Who's this now? Oh, this is Oviraptor. Now, this is probably the greatest framing of all time in history. Because, see, the name Oviraptor means egg thief, because when they found it, it was over this nest, and they thought it was actually plundering the nest, going to rob the eggs. When they examined the eggs a little closer, they realized it wasn't a thief. It was, in fact, a really good mother, and it was actually caring for its nest. But it did prove to us that not only were dinosaurs uh, parents, they're very good parents. Well, you can see why this exhibition is proving so popular with young and old alike. What a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. Oh, absolutely, and 80,000 visitors Visitors can't be wrong but um, we call it dinosaurs around the world and that's fair because these are dinosaurs from all over the world many different time periods but what a lot of people don't know is we have only found between 5 and 10 percent of all the dinosaur species that have ever existed so if there's anyone out there who wants to grow up to be a dinosaur expert there's plenty more out there to be discovered so you never know get digging you could have a dinosaur named after you someday I think perhaps it's a little bit too late for a career change for me, but budding dinosaur enthusiasts can check out this exhibition. Dinosaurs Around the World takes place until the end of August. Now, that was great fun. After the break, more scary beasts. It's sumo wrestling as you've never seen it before. Stay with us. Grant, is that camera is kind of hard to read the... Yeah. A little bit closer, or...? Marley Park. Marley can you turn up, or do you have to register? You can just turn up. Okay. Yeah. You can ask me a couple of questions. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. Of Welcome back. Have you ever thought about doing a f um, Do I want what? Um, <laughs> I think the hair is waiting to work. <laughs> oh, classic. Yes, over here. Yeah, in terms okay. of where uh, we're going to be demonstrating. Where will I stand? Done. So that you can kind of. Are you okay? Joni, are you. Are we on the grass? Yeah? Yes, yeah, it's just that sun. I don't want to be on the sun. So if you can kind of. Even come here, the foreground, just. If your son's yeah. really so, hitting your face. So if Rachel's standing, she's going to be kind of facing us, right? Are you happy with us beside each other? And 